Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This is my review of the GBD Pocket. Once again, I'd like to say thank you to GearBest.com for sending me this review sample. GPD themselves did not send me this GearBest uh, GBD Pocket. It was indeed GearBest.com. And GearBest.com has been sending me pretty much all of my hardware gear to do reviews on my channel, so I really would like to say thank you. If you're interested in buying this GPD, po uh, GPD Pocket or any other laptop, I really do recommend going to GearBest.com. In the description field, you'll find a link that will go straight to GearBest's uh, site that will show the GPD Pocket. Last I looked at it, it was $500, which is the retail price of this that it's going for. Having said that, let's go and jump straight into this. What should be massively obvious is this giant battery that is occupying most of the space here. One of the things that you can see is that 7,000 milliamp hour at 3.8 volts, so it's a pretty hefty battery for the size, decent enough. You can see some hot glue beads gluing it down, which is interesting. Usually they just have like this adhesive 3M strip that kind of keeps it down. Over here, some of them are covered, like here and here, but these are the two gigabyte Alpita chips, and there's four of them for a total of eight gigabytes. So for sure, we're definitely in uh, dual channel RAM, meaning that you take the 264 bit, these two 64 bit channels and you team them together and you run at 128 bit. So it's 120 bit wide at 1600 megahertz uh, for, well, for DDR3 1600 megahertz. So the resulting throughput is around 28 gigabytes, 25.6 gigabytes, I believe, which is helpful for the GPU because you'll be able to feed uh, the GPU what it needs. And for the most part, it's uh, adequate, I should say. Underneath this heatsink right here, connected to the heat pipe, is our 8750. And that connects to this nice beefy heat pipe that connects to these fins right here that blow out through the fan. So the fan sucks in this way and blows air out that way. It does work very well. Here you can see the grill for the inlet and here we can see the exhaust. One of the things that you should notice is uh, the excellent machining job that they have here, even for the USB-C. Everything is really, really well done. Let's zoom in, let's get this in focus. Beautiful. That's one of the things that I do like to comment on, noticing the trends that the manufacturing process that's in Shenzhen and China in general has increased markedly from where they have been well, you know, just even three years ago, the, the types of plastic mold injection type stuff that they were relying on, and now we're going into full metal. This is, uh, I believe, aluminum, but it's impressive. Like, this part is plastic right here. You can see that the Wi-Fi chip is right here, the two pigtail leads going all the way around, and then they're coming in here. Can we get the focus on that? So they're going in here, and then they're coming out, and then... They're most likely coming up here, which is unusual because usually there's some plastic to allow the radiation to more easily pass through. <clears throat> radiation being the uh, connection for the Wi-Fi, radio transmission. So um, I have checked it. Everything speed-wise is fine, so I don't think it's actually interfering all that much. Uh, it's just interesting. One of the other things that you can see here, hopefully I can get it. Yeah, right there, you see those grills? This is one of the things that MacBooks do, and right here is a speaker. And what that does, or what they try to accomplish, is what what Macs do all the time, is they kind of try, well, Macs try to force sound into the glass so that it ricochets back out back at you. So this the speaker is kind of rear-firing, but it's rear-firing into this glass, and then the glass projects the sound back at you, depending on whatever angle it's at. In this particular implementation, it's not exactly how Macs work because this one has this bended part, so it's actually, the sound is hitting this part instead of the glass. Where on MacBooks, it, the sound hits the glass, it's actually hitting right here, but still, it is quite suitable and works just fine. Um, so that's mostly it. We can actually see under here, there's something weird going on, and I'm not too sure what the deal is. This is basically like Northbridge, Southbridge type thing. This is basically a uh, PCH type of thing got going on here but they have some thermal tape connected to this and this is kind of like a heat shield that is I guess spreading the heat I don't know, I guess they're trying to go onto this that connects here I, I don't know how important this is or 
for me, I don't think that this is a giant concern, what they're doing here. I think this is just um, being cautious. But the plastic on top, I don't know, it feels like a... What's the word that I want to use? It feels kind of like a Band-Aid solution or a thing that they just did as an afterthought. I don't think that... Like, all of this seems like there's engineering thought into it. And this seems like, ah, oh, we'll just put some tape over it and it'll be good. And right here you can see the display connection which goes here, which feeds into the LCD hinge and goes to the LCD block. And that's it. And then when we open it up, you can see all those keys. And now let's go ahead, uh, I'm going to go ahead and screw this back on. You can see it's just six easy screws to access this panel, which is another thing that's amazing about Chinese manufacturing. There's no Dell thing that is trying to hide different stuff. Oh, I apologize, my, my daughter's screaming for her mother. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to pause this and I'm going to screw this back together. We're going to jump into the BIOS and take a look at more review stuff. Alrighty, so there it is. All the six screws are put in. We're going to open it up and power it on. Jump straight to, hey guys, what's going on? Good to see you. I got these lights, these new lights to go ahead and do some fancy review stuff. You can see the indicator light that's powering on. You can actually hear the fan. I'm just going to go ahead and hammer away at this Dell key that I don't like to jump into the BIOS. All right, so I think uh, this is potentially one of my problems that I've I've caused is that these the BIOS that GPD has is now um, super bare bones. I am potentially one of the reasons why this is as it is because I did a long video on my previous GPD Win stuff showing you how to do neato things with the unlocked BIOS, which is truly unfortunate. Let me go ahead and clean this real quick. Let me pause it. All right, and we're back. I should have cleaned this up a little bit more. <laughs> but I've gone ahead and logged in, and we have Steam opened. So one of the things that people do complain about is glossy screens as opposed to a matte screen, having a lot of reflection, seeing my fingers and stuff. A lot of people don't like glossy screens, but glossy screens tend to make better displays or displays that are nicer to look at except when in sunlight, and when you're using it outside, it's not the best. So let's go ahead and clear that. So if we go ahead and jump straight into the task manager, go ahead into performance, and you'll see that we're at 1.5 gigabytes with Steam Loaded, as well as MSI Afterburner and Riva Tuner, as well as H Hardware Info 64. But for the most part, the only thing that's taken up CPU cycles right now is test manager itself and a little bit of steam So let's go ahead and close that We can quickly show you the speed on the internal SSD itself. It's a Samsung chip. So this is the EMMC 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 NAND flash storage. So he reads at 121 megabytes per second and writes at 107 megabytes per second so fairly decent it is at 128 gigs large you can easily see that right um let me just go here and uh, you can see right there the other nice thing is that it does come straight into still getting a hold of this keyboard which is i have been using this device for three days now and I've been trying to make the best of it but I really the the keys are offset a bit and it's a little difficult to explain but this side there is far more uh, space given to some of the auxiliary controls and over here they're far more jammed so one of the things that I did as you can just see that it brought the latest build of creators one of the things that I did was um, you can see caps lock when I hit caps lock it actually puts a because I could I was fat fingering this all the time and I was kind of just putting caps lock on when I didn't want to so I changed cap, caps lock to be the a key and also this Dell key I prefer to be the backspace so I made Dell backspace and I kept backspace as it is because I don't use Dell all the time this is where you can delete uh, in front as opposed to backwards so that's the only things that I changed. I put those, oh, I'm not using the right key. <clears throat> so Dell is now backspace and caps lock is A. Those are the two things that I changed just so that it's a little bit more comfortable when I'm typing. Let's not save this. 
so one of the good tests that we can do that I always do is let's go ahead into my library we're gonna go ahead and play typing of the dead overkill and I am idling some games so I'll go ahead and stop it on that other end and I'll play here so one of the things that I like about doing this demo is that we can kind of see how well it works when we're typing let me lower the brightness on these lamps a little bit yeah, that's better just so we can see what's going on here a little better so GPU we can see the GPU percentage we can see frame rate we can see CPU temperature and this is important because this fan actually really does rock let me get my over I have never gone greater than 70 degrees Celsius I normally hover around 68 degrees Celsius even when it's at peak power which is six watts that it'll go up to when you'll see right here you'll see GPU clock right here and then this you can see that we're at the 2560 megahertz uh, 2.56 gigahertz which is the max clock for the turbo threaded end of the 80 uh, the 8750 so having said that let's go ahead well actually let's go ahead and let you see what I'm running at so you can see that resolution wise we're running at 965 5, by 540 window mode is off and anti-aliasing is off so basically pretty low settings whenever I can handle it the display itself is 1920 by 1200 so it is a super large resolution but we kind of still have to run way lower because there's no way the 8750 is going to be able to have it run at a, an appreciable frame rate at that resolution so I definitely have to cut the resolution considerably just so that it runs decently and you'll see that the FPS starts to tank when we get into the gameplay but more more importantly uh, this is two tests in one please be aware that you can always look at these so we can kind of get an idea but also so that you can kind of see how I feel about the keyboard this is me using this device for three days by the way wait oh, I missed tab this tab is up here uh, and I still haven't gotten it I, I, I have this off-centered feeling on it whoops did I hit escape <laughs> yes I did uh, let's resume game apologies oh uh, Try as I might, I still feel like this whole section right over here is just all sorts of messed up. Not messed up, it's just, it's taking a long time for my my fingers to acclimate to this tiny little keyboard. You can see we're kind of steady at 30 frames a second as well. Just keep that in mind. And then also look right here at six watts. Well, thank, thank goodness I didn't need, need to do the uh, apostrophe. You can see we're at 6 watts, and temperature-wise, we're only at 60 degree, 62 degrees Celsius right now, 63 degrees Celsius. When I've had it running for a long time, the max it ever got up to is 68 degrees Celsius, which is nice, considering the GPD win easily can go up to 80 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> I also will, um, what's the word I want to say, concede head for the light. What the hell? Stella! <laughs> that I am not a great typer, I'm an okay typer, and more importantly, I am a typer that learned how to type through... Um, normal means I, I'm, a, I'm an organic typer I should say I didn't I didn't go ahead and learn how to type at school or anything like learning where the home keys are I don't I don't do that because this is it like at the home keys Ugh. 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 it's uh, a <laughs> not a not a good home key typer rambunctious
P A R X N. But really, I'm only having difficulty right in this section right here. Because I just feel like it's, um, again, this is like the fourth time that I've said this. I'm just trying to hammer it home, guys. Corporation. DS. Chance encounter. Language barrier. Slow burn. Able bodied. Guessing game. Not now, not never. Not now, not never. Idiosyncratic. Ugh. Limp as lettuce. Is lettuce really limp? I'm gonna play up to where I need to save somebody. Well, it looks like it just decided to have us not play anymore. I guess we'll just do that. Unless someone cut me off on the other end. Alright. No. Alright. Let's uh, let's stop this. I'm going to pause it real quick. So that was just one quick thing that I did was you can just do Alt, the FN key, and then F4 is right here. Just so you can see it a little bit better. The F4 key. Uh, yeah, so, all right, you know, one of the questions that I'm probably going to get is how, I'm, how I am creating keys however I want them. Let's go here. We'll do sharp keys. So sharp keys is the utility that you can use. It is free to download and super easy to set up. Basically, you're going to click add. If you want to change one, you'll click this, and then you'll type the key that you want to replace. So you'll... You'll hit, well, we can just do caps lock again, right? So right now it's saying A because I've already changed it. But if we press Q, see it's Q. If you press X, it'll be X. Alrighty. So then you'll type the key that you want to replace it with. Click OK. So then you'll see here that X, let's get it up closer, that when you press X after you click right to registry, Anytime you hit X, it'll actually be D. And there's no way to get out of that because it's running directly to the registry. So anytime that... It's only within Windows. Obviously, it's not outside of Windows. But once you jump into Windows, the X key will, for all intents and purposes, be hardwired to be D. There's not like you can hold Shift to make it back to be an X button. So all these keys that you change, you're going to really want to make sure that you actually really want those keys to be what they are. So in any event, you can see that I have caps lock right there. Caps lock, ooh, get my finger out of the way. Caps lock equals A. So that when you're pressing caps lock, A happens instead. Likewise, the delete key is actually backspace. No, I don't. All right, so there's that. The device runs really well. Uh, I'm trying to gather my thoughts here. All righty, sorry about that. So... There are a few things that I want to say. That this trackpad right here, the little Lenovo ThinkPad button dealy, it works well. It works reasonably well. Um, the only time that I like to use it is when the GPT Pocket is on a tablet surface itself. If you're holding it up in the air and you're using it, it feels not great. Just doesn't, you know, it's just not very good. I almost feel like using my finger instead when I have it handheld like this. So that's one thing. The other thing is that file storage wise, at 128 gigabytes, 8 gigs of RAM is super solid. I think it's a, a really good small laptop. I don't recommend this for gaming at all, even though I showed you it playing a typing game. That was just to kind of do two birds with one stone, see how well the device runs, see that it doesn't overheat. I know that some people have had overheating problems. Um, I don't know if it's just that I got mine a little bit late. But one of the things that you can see if you go ahead and jump into services.msc is that GPD has this fans, fan monitor right there. And this is a service that GPD has created. So 
one of the things to be mindful of is that if you wanted to overwrite the Windows build with uh, Linux whenever that gets fully fleshed out, uh, I think they have an Ubuntu build that they're making, you're going to want the image that GPD provides to reinstall Windows. Because if you just do reinstall Windows, it'll work, but you're not going to have this fan monitor, and more than likely, your fan is not going to be running correctly. And even right now, you can't hear it. It's not running because it doesn't need to run, because it's not hot enough to run. So that's one of the things that you need to be mindful of. There's a few concessions that need to be made that whenever you're reinstalling Windows, you have to get the source stuff directly from GPD themselves. But after all that, it runs really, really well. Like closing and then coming back, popping right back into it. All of this stuff works really well. The standby time is okay. Uh, at 90% power left when I had it in standby and I left it in standby for a day and a half, it went down to uh, 0%. I had to recharge it. So it's not, it works well if you're just sleeping momentarily. But if you're gonna try to sleep for days, it's not going to last. I really recommend either shutting down or hibernating at that point. But hibernating with 8 gigs of RAM is going to chew up 8 gigs of file space on your EMMC NAND flash storage. So it's just one thing to be mindful of. Let me go ahead and type this in. Oh, I don't need to. Oh man, my desk is all chipped up. I only see it better when I have these lights on. So yeah, that's it. Um, the device works well. I was going around my office and saying to people kind of tongue-in-cheek, hey, do you want to see my tiny laptop? you want to see my tiny laptop? And most of the times I had it in my cargo pants uh, shorts, so they didn't see anything in my hands. They just so, you know, I was asking if they wanted to see my tiny laptop, like if it was a euphemism. They all, um, like, kind of cautiously said yes. But once I showed it to them, a lot of them were amazed that there was a tiny there it was actually a tiny laptop and then when you tell them it has eight gigs of ram and quad core and 120 gigs of storage they they pay attention a little bit more but ultimately a lot of times people ask me like well what do you do with it and this is a niche device so basically what i'm saying for this review is if this device appeals to you I can guarantee you that you will love this device. If it doesn't appeal to you, if you're looking at this and think it's silly, then don't get it. It's kind of expensive for what it is. It is just an Intel Atom with 8 gigs and 128 gigs of storage, uh, but the build quality is amazing. Everything has been thought through. It doesn't, my, my device doesn't overheat. They've more than likely fixed all the things that happened from the early, the early builds. I really like to, I have no problems with this device at all. It's just that, what do I do with it? I, I kind of like my, my X5 tablet better for gaming purposes and just having it around. It works better, but this is way more portable. And even when it's just being just generally used, it can last for about four to five hours in, with decent use, especially running, excuse me games and stuff so i don't know it's um i i can't recommend it to people unless they were actually looking forward to these devices and i know that there is a market for ultra mobile pcs because i've met a few people that have had old ultra mobile pcs and they really like them for what they were so it's basically what it is so if you come to this video taking a look and saying hey what does someone think what, what a review of it is if you like small ultra mobile PCs, for sure this is for you. One of the things that I do recommend is one of the things that I did was change some of the key bindings. You can do it. You can do it and it's free software. It's called Sharp Keys. Go ahead and download it. It's free. It's easy to set up. The only thing you have to do is click right to register and reboot and you're off to the races. Having changed the Dell key to Backspace has greatly changed my attitude towards this device because I use Backspace more than I use uh, the Dell key. And having the Backspace be smaller than the Dell key was counterintuitive to me. And that's one of the things that I really want to hammer home and stress is that you can more or less rearrange the keys how you want. And some of these keys that you feel like you're never going to use, go ahead and change them to something else that is going to be make you more productive while using this device. And that's the only thing I'm going to say. Like the caps lock key, I just got rid of. 
don't need it. I'll just make this A because if I fat finger it, I'd rather it be A than caps lock because that's a big pain in the ass when you're typing and then you hit caps lock and then you're typing and then you just have a string of characters that are now uppercase and then you have to go ahead and delete but then you're pressing delete and that doesn't work so then you have to go up here. It's just, it was, these two keys were so messed up for me that when I changed them, my entire outlook of this device changed. So um, there are tools available. You can make it how as good as you want it to be. I really like the device. If you like ultra mobile PCs, I could definitely recommend the GPD Pocket. At $500, I think that you would have to really want an ultra mobile PC to pay that amount of money. It has to be something that you think that you're actually going to want. If it's a passing fancy, I would probably say don't get it. I wouldn't recommend getting a GPD Pocket if you just have an outside curiosity towards it. There are other devices that are smaller uh, that could fit the bill. Honestly, I think you're better off with a tablet uh, like an iPad Mini at that at that point. If if you the only thing that you're looking for is being able to type relatively well on a small device, this can indeed fit the bill. It does take a little bit of time to get used to it. Again, last time I'll mention it, but this quadrant right here is a little tricky to get used to just because the right hand side feels more natural, but the left hand side is more cramped. So I find myself making far more mistakes on my left side of my hand than I ever do on my right side of my hand. Right side of my hand always feels perfect. Just over here feels weird. So it's just a few things that you have, a few hurdles that you have to get past. And that's it. That's my review of the GBD Pocket. It's a solid device, well put together, excellently made, manufacturing is really good. All the bits and pieces work as you would expect, as you would want it to. Standby works. GPU works. It's um it's a solid device. That's it. Thanks so much for watching.